Okay, so I never like to be the one to deliver bad news or uh, unpleasant news. That's just really not my shtick. I am more of a feel-good channel, but sometimes, sometimes I have to deliver bad news. Today is one of those days. Today was one of those days where we lost one of our, our people. We lost one of our people, one of our celebrities, one of our legends. We lost OJ Simpson today um, at the age of 76. And it brings a bunch of thoughts and confusion and just twist it. It's a kitchen table talk type of thing. So let's do that. Let's do kitchen table talk. Good evening. Good evening, you guys. Listen, welcome to Kitchen Table Talk Live with Spill It Boy TV. Um, I am Spill It Boy TV. And as I said, there's some bad news. Today was um, bad news. It was bad news. That's what it was. That's, that's the only thing I could actually say. It was a day for bad news. We lost OJ Simpson. Um, the I uh, found out today he actually perished due to complications with prostate cancer. Because at first I just heard that he was gone, and I'm like, "What do you mean? It's just he's gone." And then I heard a little later that it was cancer, and then a little bit after that I heard that it was prostate cancer. You know, I have no patience for the c word and the c word taking our people up out of here. I'm not a fan at all. So, um, yeah, Didi, I, I wasn't aware that he was actually battling, but after that information came out, I actually looked around and I actually did see um, a video, a short video of him actually talking about going through chemotherapy. Of course, you know, that touches space with me. I've been through chemotherapy. Um, I know that gig, you know, unfortunately, I know that gig. And he was speaking about um, nausea and the whole thing, it just brought back a whole bunch of memories, but I said, okay, all right. So, um, I have some things to say because here's the thing, when it comes to OJ Simpson, he is like a hot topic. He's always been a hot topic for one reason or another. And the one thing about a kitchen table is that you'll get down and you can actually say what it is you want to say. Because it always seems as though when people die, then they become saints. Well, not at the kitchen table. See, at the kitchen table, people actually say what it really is. If they were a drug dealer when they were living, that's when people talk about them being a drug dealer. They talk about that at the kitchen table. When, you know, when you're down to the church, to the funeral. They said, oh, he was such a nice boy. That ain't the space where I live. But I ain't really here to tear him up at all. I don't have any of that to do. This video is really about how someone could actually be, because it's what my feelings were today, the feelings that I, the emotional roller coaster I rode today, how someone in one lifetime, one lifetime, one short, 76, that is a short lifetime these days. You have people, you know, just kicking 90, kicking 80s like it's nothing and rolling around like 20-year-olds. So 76 is still a short lifetime. And how you could be a legend, how you could be famous and also be infamous all in the same small, short lifespan is crazy to me. But if there's anybody who actually did it, it is O.J. Simpson. O.J. Simpson was all of those things. He was a legend. He was famous as hell. And he was also infamous. 
he was also infamous. Exactly, D. Both my grandmothers, my grandmother and her mother lived into their 90s. Yeah, he was he was all those things. You know, I mean, he was loved by some, hated by others. Some people he could, just couldn't get enough of whatever he had to say, and everything he said was and there's other people who just did not believe a thing that came out of his mouth at a point. So that's where we at on April the 11th, 2024. So this is kind of my range of things. So I went and I started just grabbing a few things. So I'm just going to kind of quickly just kind of go through and I'm not going to linger and have you in here for 52 because we lived it. I lived, I lived through the whole drama of all of it for the most part, you know, while well, his adult life. But OJ Simpson, I'm just going to throw out just some 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 stuff that I pulled. Some of this stuff I wasn't really aware of. Some of this stuff I knew some things when I read it, it I, I remembered and I'm like, wow, this is like kind of what what was OJ Simpson? Who was OJ Simpson? Because I got some younger people that follow me too. They know the name, but they don't know like who he really is. They know about the bad stuff. They don't know about the other stuff. So, okay, OJ Simpson. He left here, 76 years old. He was born July 9th, 1947 in, in San Francisco, okay? Now, this was something. He actually had rickets as a child and actually ended up having like really severely and badly bowed legs that literally attracted taunts from the neighborhood kids. So he... um. He literally was being teased about having bowed legs. Now, that that in itself is like a crazy thing. Like, literally, we see people with bowed legs, and that's like a sexy thing. But depending on how bowed your legs are, it ends up looking like a disability. So you can go from, like, right, it's right there. You He started off, started off, right in life with that riding wave, you got bowed legs and people are teasing you when there's most people got bowed legs and people be attracted to them. It's like this whole sex thing, like it's like a sexy thing, having bowed legs. So, but his were actually a problem. His mom got on it and literally, and they were, they were impoverished. They weren't some people that actually had money and things like that, but his mom was a mom. And she did what she needed to do to straighten her baby out. He wore braces and stuff like that. And she did some creating of her own and some uh, what we would call. Here I go. See, it's the kitchen table. It's the kitchen table. So I ain't going to be politically correct, but she did some nigger rigging. OK, to make sure her baby got what he needed. OK, and mama's work paid off because by the time he was in high school, by the time he was in high school, he was breaking records playing football. So whatever it was that mama had done, done worked and got him straight and got him on the right path. And um, he literally really made a name for himself in USC in 1968 during his senior year. He actually got the Heisman Trophy. So he literally went from dang near being like the little handicapped kid that people pick on to being like a football star by the time he got into college. Um, he ended up in 1969 being snatched up by the uh, Buffalo Bills um, during the National Football League draft. So everything for him just took off. He was named NFL Football Player of the Year in 1972, again in 1973, and again in 1975, again all from the little boy who had the disability that the kids were teasing all just became a whole thing that and right in there is where he got the nickname and he started being called um because he's being called oj because his name is ornthal ornthal james simpson is his real name now that's a heck of a name i i, I see why he went with oj other than that ornthal i said who that's a heck of a name but he then became known as the juice 
he had a, you know, he, he was a celebrity at that point. He was literally one of our first celebrity athletes. And that's how he started to be known as the juice. Now, by the mid 1970s, he was a sports icon and he was actually doing some acting because this is what happens. This is not new where people do one thing and then it spins off into money because that's what it's all about. You don't have to be an actor. They'll make you an actor. <laughs> hey, when your name gets to people, they'll make you an actor. But he actually was good at it. He was in movies. He was in The Tower and Inferno, um, the Cassandra Crossing. Um, then he had a whole deal with Hertz. Do you all remember that when he had to deal with Hertz rent a car and did the television campaigns? That was the beginnings of all that stuff. You know, he was. Big on that, that hurt because Hertz rental used to be a big thing back in the day. Back in the day, it was a big, big thing. Um, a lot of people remembered him, and he really reached a lot of audiences playing on those Naked Gun. That Naked Gun movie, the spoof movie, that Naked Gun, he got a lot of support and a lot of people. A lot of people liked that. That Naked Gun. Them little movies were the, the it thing back then. They were very popular with white folks, black folks, all kind of folks. That whole, that, it was it was funny and it was big and he was in there. He had a part and he was recurring and it, it worked for him. That definitely worked for him. Now, here in 1979, he retired from football. Okay, I remember that. I do remember that. The same year, his 12-year marriage to Marguerite L. Whitley ended in divorce. Do y'all remember that? That's 1979. I was seven years old. That marriage ended. Um, that first marriage actually produced three children, Arnell, Jason, and Aaron. Okay? Here's the thing that I actually, I remembered this once I, once I was reading this, but I hadn't thought about this in years. In years, I hadn't thought about this, but I do remember this. Um, in 79, Aaron, who was 23 months old, actually drowned in their family swimming pool. And that was something that rarely got talked about publicly, but I remember that being discussed back then. And then it kind of went away like it, like, it, you know, again, who wants to keep revisiting that? And then just to think about it, back in that time, in 79, see, we're so desensitized to stuff now. Now, th they'll tell you, like, you'll go, just when you're watching the news, watch the news. Now, if they cover that, Something about a baby, because that was a baby. Passed it in a swimming pool. On the news now, they'll flash a picture of the swimming pool that the baby died in. If they don't get footage of the baby in a body bag, they'll flash that on TV. Things weren't like that when I was growing up. We hadn't gotten so desensitized back when I was seven, eight, nine, ten years old. You didn't see stuff like that. If they said it on the news, they said it, and you didn't see no crime scenes. You know, they, they didn't do that or 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 traumatic. They didn't do that type of stuff. So it, it didn't shock me that there wasn't like, a, you know, we didn't like harp on it because we didn't harp on that kind of stuff back then. You know, now people are just like, it's like everyday stuff, like whatever. And when you think about it, that is everyday stuff. Something awful happens to somebody every day, every day. But chances are you can go through your whole life and never actually witness it. You know what I mean? But just know that, that thing, bad things happen to people every day, just like good things happen to people. There are a whole lot of us floating around on this planet, but we're so desensitized and stuff that it's, it's actually, it's, sickening and it's scary 
these days, how we just, you know, anything goes. It just is what it is. I, I, watching the news, you see worse stuff on the news than you ever seen in a horror movie back in the 70s and the 80s. The news is a whole mess. But anyway, I digress. Um, so here's the thing. I know this. By the time that that tragedy actually had happened, OJ had already been dating Nicole Brown. He met her in 1977 when she was a waitress at a Beverly Hills nightclub. Um, and she was like 30 years his junior. So he had already been involved with Miss Nicole at that time. The two of them ended up getting married February 2nd, 1985. Their first child name was Sydney. Sydney was born in October of 85. And then the son, Justin, was born in 1988. Um, so it's like on to a whole new family. You don't even hear about Marguerite and her kids anymore. Now, this is the era of Nicole and OJ. You don't even hear about the first people. Um, in 1985, OJ got inducted into the Pro Football Hall of Fame. Now, all that stuff, all that stuff, leaving a marriage, going into another marriage, um, he famous. So nobody really had nothing to say. You know, at the time about that type of stuff. Again, that's social media stuff. When everybody got something to say about your business, that wasn't the thing back then. So he's famous. It is what it is. Like I said, Marguerite, Marguerite who? And her children, who? Is all about Nicole. And that's what we saw all the time. Nicole and OJ. The fact that he's 30 years older than her and all that. Nobody said that. I mean, he was a celebrity, honey. And that was that. He was famous. So that was it. Anyway, after that, he actually he did become a sports broadcaster on um, for NBC and ABC. Of course, I remember that stuff. I was around. And Clutney had a brief run as a replacement for a broadcaster, Howard Cosell, on the Monday Night Football. That was a big deal. That was definitely a big deal because Howard Cosell, was a big deal, okay? And keep in mind, all while these things were going on, O.J. Simpson was you. You get my catch my trip. See, these were the things. He was very much black, so these were definitely huge deals. These things that he was doing. Being a black man and doing these things, big deal, definitely a big deal, and definitely something for us to be proud of. And we were, and we were. OJ Simpson, you say OJ Simpson, baby, we break out into dance and song, honey. It was what it was. He was one of our heroes. He was one, is, let me take that back, is, is, because I don't, I'm not going to wash away what your talents were. When you have a misstep, and, and you know, I, I'm just not throwing our people away. I just, I'm not going to do it. He, like I said, famous, legendary, is what it is. Is what it is. Those things you can't take it away. Um. All right. So here's some other stuff. Things. Time is moving on. Things are different. Okay. Things are getting different. OJ and Nicole, okay, now we're talking about paparazzi and all this stuff. We're talking about the 80s. Now I'm in high school. So I'm like 86, 87, 88, 89. I graduated high school in 89. By this time, you know, we got the paparazzi and things were, you know, folks is, you know, we see and stuff. OJ and Nicole were rumored to be a very volatile couple, okay? They would fight and make up regularly. This was kind of what people knew of them. So that would be talked about. That would be talked about, okay? 1989, New Year's Day. 
1989, there was an anonymous, I read this um, earlier, there was an anonymous 911 call and the police were summoned to the home shared by Nicole and OJ. When the cops got there, Miss Nicole is outside hiding in the bushes. And when the cops get there, she gave you the whole damsel on distress day. She come up out the bushes, like child, like that Homer Simpson little cartoon thing. And she didn't come up out of them bushes screaming and hollering, he's gonna kill me, he's gonna kill me, he's gonna kill me. Shortly thereafter, he comes out because again, by this time, OJ kind of sometimes would forget. that he was this and my that. So this fool then came out hollering, I got two women and I don't want that woman in my bed anymore. Now they quoted that, they quoted him saying that. When the cops came, I said, Lord, have the man done forgot. Not, okay? So they had a lot, of, lot going on, a lot going on. In that situation, OJ pleaded no contest to um, domestic violence and was ordered to pay a seven hundred dollar fine. Um, he was he also had to obtain a psychiatric tra uh, counseling and perform one hundred and twenty hours of community service, and he was also placed on um, two years probation. And um, both of them issued a statement calling that altercation an isolated and unfortunate incident, okay? So now in hindsight, in hindsight, they should have left each other alone. They, they literally should have left each other alone, but you can't take it back. But when you look back in hindsight, you like, Shh, the writing is on the wall, um, that things could go left. Anyway, 1992, just like three years later, the couple, they divorce. OJ and Nicole divorce. And then October 25th of 1993, Naturally, they have children, so they still definitely have a part in one another's lives, okay? So, 93. Nicole accused OJ of breaking down her door, and she's saying, he's going nuts. It was another 911 call, and in the tape, you could hear her screaming, he's breaking down my door, and he's going nuts. So still toxic and they ain't even together, ain't been together in a year and still toxic. Just their, their thing, like they literally just were not in a good place. Now here's where everything took the turn for the worse. 1984, I'm not getting ready to go through the whole situation of what happened. You all know what happened. Um, the turn for the worse with OJ at that point. This is when being famous and being legendary caused a whole bunch of controversy. And then it was this whole thing of like people picking sides and you went from being this beloved person Two, there were people who literally hated you and there were people who wanted to go on a witch hunt for you. And he literally went from being famous to being infamous. OK, 1984, he was accused of the murders of Nicole Brown Simpson and her friend Ronald L. Goldman and the way in which they were taken out was horrific. It was absolutely the things that you see in mafia movies and horror movies, which not so far from the truth, these things happen. Very much look like a crime of passion. Crime of passion. What was done and how it was done was passion. 
passion. So, um, did I say 84? 94, sorry. 94. 94, sorry. 94. Sorry, you guys. 94. Um, so, you know, y'all fact check me in a minute. Thank you very much, Celine. <laughs> 94. Um, so that thing just got really, really, really ugly. Very ugly, like the country. And some folks that wasn't in the country, it just split. It was, you know, some people hated them, some people loved them, and it never stopped. There are people right now, you go into a room, you could get an old nasty piece of debate going on with, did he do it? Did he not do it? You talking about a one-liner? Baby, if it doesn't fit, then you must have quit. That one-liner will go down in history. You know, that's one of the big ones that wasn't even done by, because uh, you know, the one-liners, the gay folks could come up with a one-liner better than anybody on the planet. Not in this case, baby. Mr. Cockburn, honey. <laughs> he really slammed it with that. But any room you go into, you can really get a whole thing going. Did he do it? Did he not do it? Um, was he involved? Was it that whole thing? That whole thing. He was accused of it and he was acquitted of it. Now, he did go to prison, though. Um in 2008. 2008, he literally got a term of nine to 33 years after a conviction on armed robbery, kidnapping, conspiracy, and other charges that actually stem from this attempt to recover some valuable memorabilia that he claims was stolen from him. Um, that was the one of the craziest turnabouts that I've ever seen. Like you literally got off of a murder beef for two people. And then you end up in jail about some material things that somebody took. So he did end up doing jail time, like nine years of jail time. And he ended up getting out. I, I'm going to just step out and say his quality of life never really returned to what he was used to. Because again, you went from being legendary and famous to legendary and infamous. Um, and then at that point, he was older and time had moved on. and. It just seemed like a lot of kind of bad, I don't hate to say bad luck, but just things just weren't. You know what I mean? Things just weren't. Things weren't. Things with OJ Simpson just what when I say quality of life, it it's nothing like what all the things that I read off that had happened and he had done earlier on in his life. Like, this is not the life that you would think that would lead to. That's the part that shook me to my core when it's like, he's gone now. And then he, he's gone due to cancer of all things, of all things, because cancer is very unforgiving. It's very unforgiving. It doesn't pinpoint certain people. Um, it's not, you did so-and-so, and so you got cancer. You know, people will say that, but cancer can attack any of us at any time. There's no rhyme. There's no reason. So when I hear somebody say something stupid, like, because he actually said that in, in the video, I said, I caught cancer. You ain't caught no cancer. You don't catch cancer. You wind up with cancer. You don't catch cancer, baby. It catches you, okay? It catches you. No rhyme, no reason. I am in my family, literally, in my immediate family, I am the only person that does not smoke and have never, I've never smoked. Never smoked, do not smoke. 
I don't smoke weed. I don't smoke cigarettes. None of that. I don't chew tobacco. I don't, none of that. I'm the one who ended up with cancer. I'm the one who ended up with cancer. No rhyme, no reason. It doesn't run in my family or anything like that. And it's crazy because whenever I ended up with cancer, caught, can't, did I say caught cancer? <laughs> I'm the one who ended up with cancer. I had cancer. And then I had a female cousin who ended up with cancer. I had a male cousin who ended up with cancer. Two female cousins, actually. One, she had chemo and radiation, and she's good. She's good to go. And I'm literally still here. And I, my other female cousin perished, and my other male cousin perished. We didn't have cancer in our family like that. I had one family member that died from cancer when I was about eight or nine years old. And that's it. She dealt with radiation and stuff way back. I was young, young, but that was it. So when it happened to me, like everybody's just like, okay, what's next? You know, what what we do next, child? You know what you do next. How do you hit your knees and you ask? What do we do? Or what will you have us do? That's what you do. So when I have people say, I caught, can you catch cancer? Cancer caught you. And it it's weird how it, you know, you don't know. Like, how did I end up beating it? And then I got two other cousins who didn't make it. And they weren't like distant cousins. They were like cousins, the second and third cousins and stuff. It's weird. But for him, to go out like that, I was like, damn, that's, it just seems as though once things went downhill, like they never really stopped going downhill. You know, he did that jail stint. And then after that, he got out and it was like, okay, he's going to be cool now. And I think he was cool, but it was like, dang, like, you know, it's just what kind of life is this now? This is not like no high profile life. It's just a life. And then boom, prostate cancer and it takes you up out of here. What is that all about? And this life that we live is something serious. Um, that's it. That's really, I ain't want to bring y'all mood down too much, but I have to say it, it, it this whole thing today left me feeling a type of way. Like, what is this really all about? Like, that that's deep. That is deep to me. Literally to go from a child who almost had like just a disability. You can almost have a disability. You get a little disability. But you had a good mama who, you know, she's a praying mother and a mother that had works to go behind her prayers and she took care of the situation. She turned him into a superstar. Turn, he turned into a superstar. Right in front of our very eyes. Became a legend. You'll always be talked about. People will always know who you are. People will always know what you did. All of that. Then you your life flips over and you're like this monster to, to some people. Like you, you know, you're the thing that people write books about and the thing that people write horror stories about. And then you end up being a common criminal. You're in jail like a common criminal. And then you get out and you just have a decent life, you know, and it, it, of course his life is, you know, it's a better life than most, but for all that you've done, it's just a decent life for all that you've done. And then to go out like that, baby, this life is something, but I'll tell you this before I leave, this life is something this life is not fair. Life is not fair. Trust me, it's not. It is not fair. There's always some shit going down. Life is not fair. 
but I wouldn't trade it for nothing, baby. I'm going to keep on doing it, honey. Every day that he let me wake up, baby, I'm going to deal with the ups, the downs, the roundabouts, and the back kicks, baby, until he say I can't be here no more. But yes, this life is something else, honey. And sometimes I have to say, my God, honey, he got a, a different type of sense of humor. He do. He do. He really, really do. But that's all right, because I'm going to ride it out with him until he don't want to ride it out with me no more. And on that, I'm going to leave y'all and I'm going up out of here. But still a legend. In my opinion, he is still a legend. He is still famous. He is still infamous. He is all those things. Rest in peace, OJ Simpson. I ain't getting ready to say nothing bad about you. I'm just stating what I know, what I learned, what I lived through. I don't have no no ill feelings and no you do I ain't pointing my finger at you no kind of way other than to say go on OJ rest in peace OJ Simpson you all have a great night I just had to speak my piece that's it that's all nothing real major I just had some things to say and um on that I'm gonna leave y'all and I will catch y'all on the flip side y'all have a good night And, and, and feel like